Good morning, everybody. I know, well, since recording this video, it's been like nine or 10 days since I've uploaded to YouTube. And I've just been so busy. Went to Poland to watch Drift Masters, which was awesome. I didn't, I didn't film it because it didn't do well last year. And it was just like, I'd rather just enjoy the weekend, you know? And then we literally landed at seven o'clock no, we, we landed at 11 o'clock that night. We had to drive down to Dover that night and get a six o'clock ferry over to France. And we drove through Switzerland, through Italy, through Austria. It was absolutely amazing. We went in the X5. I'm pretty sure that video is live now or has been live. What an experience. And we was doing that for true rally obviously we're holding a rally to the stelvio pass next year we're going through the swiss alps we're going through lake como for the stelvio pass so we had to go and plan that and we've planned it because they actually shut the roads from october till june so we only had like a week or two to go in september we went it was absolutely incredible but obviously i was away for about a week so i didn't have a chance to film pay for everything over your hotels your ferry your food we plan the route we do activities all the hotels the nights out everything we pay for everything all you pay for is fuel so if you're interested in that head over to true rally we're actually holding a christmas rally as well well, please go to True Rally, check out the rallies that we've got for coming up. But for now, the Mustang is here and she's looking absolutely beautiful. Or maybe not so beautiful because we've got silver wheel on this side and a black wheel on this side. And we've got so much tire mark here. We need to find a way to get all these tire marks off. Cuba said use paint thinners, but I'm really scared to do that in case I strip all the lacquer off. So we're going to try some things like WD-40 and stuff. But that's not the main thing of the video. The main thing of the video is that... Obviously we're drifting a lot recently. I fell in love with this sport called drifting. Some people might think it's a sport. If you go and see people at night, maybe it's not a sport, but I fell in love. I fell in love with this sport called drifting and we're gonna be doing a big mod to the Mustang today, which Yogi has been very adamant that I shouldn't do. He doesn't want me to do because he wants to be pure. And you know, he want, he's an enthusiast, a drifting enthusiast. But unfortunately, I've got a Mustang and I feel like I want to do this. I need to do this and I want to do it. All the big drifters do it, so I'm gonna do it. But we've got a lot of other things to do as well. So first of all, we actually need to lower the rear of the back. The back is just too high. Monster truck, it's actually worse on the other side, so we need to lower the back, which shouldn't be too bad. Well, it is now because we've got poly bushes on the back, so it's a pain drop in the axle. But anyway, but we need to take the whole front suspension apart. That's what needs to happen today. We need to take the arms off, we need to take the hubs off. So as you know, well, as you guessed, we're going to be dropping the arms and the hubs off with a guy called Wizard of Lock, who is a OG in the drifting scene. He makes all lock kits and stuff. So we're going to drop them off. He's going to be cutting the arms, notching the arms, and welding the knuckles up. So we're going to have a ton more lock. Yogi doesn't like this because Yogi likes going over full lock and doing backies and stuff. But unfortunately, I've got a Mustang with a steel V8 in there. So when I hit full lock, all it does is just dig me into the floor. So as soon as I go on full lock, um, the car just rotates. So yeah i want to do this i know yogi if you're watching this i'm sorry you've told me not to but i want to do it because i want more angle and when you've got more angle it's scarier for passengers and you actually have a lot more room for error as well you can make mistakes and um kind of you know rectify the mistakes by just adding more angle and it looks cool because you're fucking way sideways so we just strip the whole suspension apart i've never done this i don't know what the bolts are going to be like but we need to get this off and we need to change the back tire as well because we've got a drift day on Friday. So let's crack on with today's video. So the main issue with the Mustangs is that, if I'll show you here now, as you can see, standard, they have a spring which goes in there. It's not like independent suspension. Um, they have like, you know, a spring and then they have a shock which God knows where it goes. I don't really know to be fair. But what this causes is because this arm is so wide, you barely get any angle. Um, and the wheel just starts hitting the inside and stuff like that. So look at this here. So I think that's an old one. Um, so we are going to have to run spacers um, because I think this was when before um, I've been uh, doing it because I don't think my wheel hits. It doesn't sound like it hits anyway because I've got the spacer on. And we might have to run even bigger spacers, I'm not going to lie. And that's just to push the wheel away from the arm, especially now we're going to be getting this cotton welded and the knuckle cotton welded. So in theory, what they do is, you see this bit here where the trap rod goes to, the tie rod, they will cut that, shorten it, and then weld it back together. Um, now the idea of that, the, the tie rod is pulling closer to the hub. If you pull in closer, the hub's gonna rotate a lot more. Now my only issue is I don't really have much clearance here between that and the arm, so I'm gonna send a lot of pictures, I'm gonna take a lot of pictures. Um, so that he can he can see but what they also do is what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get this arm cut and notched so basically we're gonna have to get this arm maybe cut down here and then notched together so we have clearance for the tie rod so i've never touched anything on the front of this car so let's hope it all comes off pretty easy so we've got two 12 mil bolts here for the carriers or calipers and then give this a big pry off 
I think they're EBC yellow stuff pads. So funny enough, obviously, as you probably, oh my God, they're light. Oh my God. Wow. They're like full, full aluminium calipers. Oh my God. I didn't, oh shit. What is that? Oh, I think it's just part of the, uh, oh. We're ignoring that. I didn't see that on the pistons. That's fine. The brakes work fine. Don't worry about that. Oh God, look at that. Oh. Oh God, that's definitely, if you look at this, that's the, that's them from the brake pads. So they, because there's no indent in the, uh, in the piston, can you see? There's no indent in the piston, but these have created their own indent and that's shattered one of the pistons. I mean, it's not leaking, they still work, so I'm not going to worry about it for now, but I'm going to have to buy a rebuild kit in the future. And next time, if them pads come with them notches, I'm going to have to grind them down. Right, then we've got two 15 mils here for the carrier. I shouldn't really do that with my spanners because that's how I keep ruining the bloody teeth on them. A lot of them like, not the teeth, but the actual ratchet. I keep ruining the bloody ratchet on them. Like a lot of the 12 mils and stuff I've got, like they're like solid until I hit them and then they become a ratchet again. I'm like, oh. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> Every single time, Every single time I fucking pick up a tool or come outside, it rains. But you think you're fucking hard, do you? Rain? You think you're fucking hard? Well, guess what? Well, fucking guess what I've got. After years of people telling me I need to get a gazebo for outside, huge thank you to Rock Awnings. I went and I've got one. <laughs> Used it the drift the other the day and it was awesome. And I said to him, I was like, look guys, there will be a time I'll use it in the YouTube video and I'll thank you in the YouTube video. Now is the time, we need to get these parts off and it's raining, so it's a big gazebo, I don't know where I'm going to pop it up. I should have done this before I had the car on the drive, so we're going to have to work around the car, but I think I'll be able to do it. Here it is, this is one of their Explorer series gazebos and it's awesome. It comes in a little bag like this and you literally just pop it up, like you don't need any tools, you don't need anything, it literally just pops up and then it just self clips in and then you can just take it down again in like literally a couple of minutes so let me get this out let me pop it up and uh oh my god for the first time ever i'll be able to get out of the rain boom <laughs> yo 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 yes oh my god this is oh, we're getting wet. Uh, by the way i am trying to find a unit people i am in the post of trying to find a unit but it's a long process um so yes shout out to rock awnings there is a link there is a discount code on the screen if you want to try one of their um one of their gazebos out mine come with all the sides and everything oh hang on so yeah discount code on the screen if you want to try out rock warnings but let's crack on now we're out the raid okay so we're getting there i'm hoping i don't have to take the uh the wheel bearing off but the idea is what they'll do is so the track rods here they'll cut this bit off and then weld this over here and then you'll get a lot more kind of torque uh, or inertia on the actual uh, hub itself and it will turn more that's the idea i don't think i'm going to attempt to get the wheel bearing off because i really don't want to but to be fair i think he, he'll have the tools to get the wheel bearings off if he needs so i'm just going to give him the hub with the wheel bearing on and hopefully he can work a way around that so what we've got to do now is we've got to take the strut out so we've got a couple of bolts here and um, two bolts for the strut and we've got to take the arms off so there's i don't i think oh no it's not too but i thought there was going to be one stupidly long bolt going through there but it's not the nut and bolt here nut and bolt over there and then we've got to attempt to get this uh the ball joint off um although to be honest even then i can just supply him the arm with the ball joint and let him get it off don't know how happy he's going to be about that <laughs> but it is what it is right luckily i've actually had these coilovers off recently so everything's coming off nice one thing that didn't come off very nice was the track rod. Bloody hell, honestly, I had to hammer the shit out of it. If I was, if, if I didn't know that you had to hammer the shit out of a track rod, I'd be here for hours because that was just honestly not moving. Oh, there we go, perfect. What's all this? Is that a tire? No. Tire from the front? Oh, maybe, unless that's what it's been like rubbing against the arm. A few stones in there. Weight safe. One thing that would potentially be an issue if uh, this wasn't a drift shitbox um, would be the ABS wire is literally here and the ABS cable's there. So way cutting, like this was probably gonna have to be cut off. So luckily we don't run ABS. Um, <coughs> whoa. 
<laughs> Whoa, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. So, um, we're going to take this ABS wire out. And we're going to actually just take this all out. So, we don't actually need it. Um, it's just another thing to get in the way. So, we're going to actually pull out. I'm going to see where that goes up here and actually take it off. But this actually looks like a new bolt. Like, it literally looks like a new screw. So, we might be able to actually get this out, you know. Usually, if you remember from the video with the, uh, with the axle, um, you literally have to usually I just had to cut these I literally butchered the shit out of them to get them out I am using the wrong size Phillips here but it is working so we'll get rid of this because we don't need that and then all we need to do really well, I don't like saying that because that always bloody something always breaks get the two arms the two bolts off there get the two, well two bolts off there and then we're just going to give it to him like that and then it's up to him if he needs to take the ball joint off which I don't think he I don't know he might be able to he might not but same with the wheel bearing I'm not going to go through the trouble of uh, taking all the wheel bearing off just in case he doesn't even need to so we're going to give it him like that and hopefully he doesn't hate us cheers what is the what? no way this is the first ABS sensor in history to actually come off and it's from a 2003 ford mustang <laughs> i mean it's, it's not out yet but it is coming can you see it's literally coming out that is crazy look at that went in shame we've got to throw it away look at this the americans have thought of everything you've got a nice little you know a nice little hatch here nice little windowsill for your brake caliper oh fucking hell Get a bit of W diesel on them. This side's probably going to be easier because I've had a power steering leak for the right 12 years, so it's probably going to be constantly lubed by the power steering. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's tight, but it's coming right. I'm actually intrigued to see the state of these bushes because I've always had a knock on the front end. Ow, oh, oh, you little fucker. I've always had a knock on the front end, and it's like, I don't, oh, oh shit, I don't know where it's coming from. Oh. So it might be from these terrible bushes, so it might be. obviously I would say now's a good chance to change them, but I've got a drift day next week. And I'm not gonna get bushes from America before then. So yeah. The one thing I like about this car is that everything is like a butt a nut and a bolt. There's no captive nuts, there's no like threaded bits which into the subframe. Like it's all nut and bolts, which is good because I mean, yeah, it's a bit more of a pain getting them off because you've got to roll the other side. But, you know, if anything does break or whatever, it does snap, it's not really that big of a problem. And this side, this side's barely even tight. I knew it. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Okay, I was wrong. It is tight. It is tight. Sorry, guys. Jesus. Jesus, wet tonight. Will that go up there and rest against there? Or is it just going to come off? It's just going to come off. Is it? Oh, hang on. Hang on. This is this is where my knuckle goes, Gab. Oh wait no. We're all right. She's coming. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Um, excuse me. Um, excuse me, mate. There we go. There we go. Excuse me, mate. Oh, shit, I almost fell. There we go. So I've realised I've got a bit of a tear in the rack gator as well, or the rack boot. So I've just ordered a universal one of them, um, and we'll just make that work. So we'll leave that for now. But obviously, when the new one comes, we'll just take the track off, slide it over, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully that'll stop a bit of the fluid coming out. It's, it's got a bit of a power steering fluid leak here. We don't really lose much from the, from the bottle, so I think it's just seeping out from one of the seals. But once I've got that rack boot on, it'll stop it from dripping everywhere and stuff. So... Right, we've got the arms here. I've compared them against the picture um, on the American ones. What they do is they cut it down here. So they cut this off. They'll cut it all the way down here and then come up and then they'll notch it, which I, I believe is just put the plate. I'm not quite sure, but you can't just leave it there. Otherwise, it'll flex. So you've got to put kind of like this plate on that bit. So they'll just put a new bit of metal or they might just cut this shape but just move it over a bit i'm not sure how they're going to do it but they're their arm they're the arms we're going to take them down to uh Wiz of, of lot this afternoon the bushes actually look not too bad to be honest so i don't think my knots coming from there we've got the rear wheels off. that was a bit of a pain jacking it up uh, i'm not gonna lie so i've got jacking each side these are the tires <laughs> this is to my last um drift taxi day at uh brands actually at gold japan so if anyone came out uh, to be fair, I actually did the drift day before I actually 
release the colour and I didn't have my reg on the back so like I don't think anybody knew it was me because nobody tagged me in stuff I had a few people going oh was that you I didn't, didn't know you changed the colour of the Mustang really scared I should have put my reg on or something because I wanted some spicy story tags but I didn't get any cool um, so that's, the, that's what the tyres were like we've got some four new tyres over here one thing we need to do as well is if you remember oh, a few weeks ago or last month or whatever it was when we changed the rear axles this is a cobra rear axle we put the cobra rear axle on and because they've got the cobra rear axle they've got a different um bracket here so that, look this is this bracket is a little bit different um and it pushes the caliper a bit further away meaning you can put on a bigger disc now i'm not entirely sure if it's the same caliper but just a different bracket uh, or it's a total different caliper it looks like if i just put the bigger disc in there it will fit perfect so i did actually buy some cobra ray discs i found a company well ebc and they actually stopped the cobra ray disc so if you have a look here i've got a ton of overhang and uh, my contact patch is tiny so that's not ideal for the hydro in uh, i have ordered a, a longer hydro just so i get a bit more leverage on the pull but ideally i need full contact patch on these on these discs um i have got some discs inside so what we're going to do is we're going to take all this off take these discs off and make sure that those discs actually fit with this caliper if they do then i'm going to order some new pads just for this um for this reg and then i should have full contact patch or at least a bit better contact patch. i don't need to be perfect but as long as it fits in there it doesn't hit here uh, and it doesn't rub anywhere or knock anywhere then i'll be able to use this obviously not now because these pads are gone because half of them has been gone down and half of them are not because half of them are overhanging i hope this is making sense so we're gonna take the disc off this side and just gonna make sure that those discs do fit um with these calipers if they do that'd be perfect i'll order some new pads and then we'll have a bit better uh, thingy then and then when i come to put the other axle on because don't forget we're doing the um we're doing a four to ten ratio diff in the other axle um then i will see if i can just swap this caliper bracket over here to the new axle let's just take the space uh, the spaces off oh, uh, uh, i mean there's just one uh, let's just take the 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 ones uh just uh, just just take the one spacer off the wheel at the back this is what's happened to the pad because <laughs> there's been so much overhang okay here's the thing we've been waiting for i hope this works they've actually been sat in my conservatory for ages so you can see the difference they're bigger but not by like an absolute huge amount so i'm hoping that that just fills the, the bit of the carrier that's what i'm hoping for anyway i mean obviously they, this aren't going to go to waste because if these um um if they are too big then we just need to buy uh the carrier and the caliper which isn't usually isn't a big deal but for cars like this it is a big deal because you can't get anything from the uk um and obviously with it being a cobra it's even harder to find one breaking so it could be difficult you can get them from america you just gotta just pay tons of postage but it's not that bad to be fair so either way we're gonna have the bigger discs on but i'm praying that this carrier kind of just bolts on and doesn't hit so it is just touching on this side um as you see so that's not grooved it. it's literally just took a bit of the black paint off so it's just touching so i think what we i think we'll we will get away with that it's not touching the top here doesn't look like so i think if we can just shave off a couple of millimeters on this side hmm, i don't know actually i don't know really know about the brakes obviously because uh, this one's wider does the brake someone in the comments please does the brake have to be perfectly in between the two sides like this side and that side does that gap have to be perfectly the same will that affect like the pre the, the pressure or if it just doesn't scratch is it fine like does it have to be perfectly the perfectly spaced gap there and perfectly spaced gap this side does that have to happen somebody please let me know in the comments below um because i might i will have a look to see if i can find a carrier and a caliper from a cobra um but they are just hard to find being in this country so let me know people can i just you know get it like sand it down get it on machine or, or just machine that a little bit more just so it fits or does it literally have to be precise on each side thanks guys let me know and i'm just going to clear this up because i know that people are going to be asking this uh, because i asked it before why don't you just change the bracket over from this one to the other one you know from the other cobra to this one well you can't because the, here is the bracket here if you see this big thing here um and you can't change that 
while the axle's still in. Uh, you've got to remove the axle to get that off. And to move the axle, you've got to open the diff up to take the circlips out, to pull the axle out to change this. So obviously I don't want to be doing all that and resealing the diff and draining the diff all just to change the bracket over when I'm going to be opening that one very soon anyway, putting the diffs in. So that was the idea. Open that up, open this up, take the, you know, swap the brackets over because I'm pretty sure you can. So you've got a little clip here and then you've got the bolts in there as well. See them there? I'm pretty sure that's for that bracket. Um, and then we'll put that in the new axle. It's just a lot of work just to do now when this works. It doesn't work as good as it should, the hydro, but like it works. So yeah. I fucked up guys. Because I well about, I wound back the pistol on the back, just to obviously just to put the new pads on. And then pressing the pressing the brake pedal just to close them back up again. I was like, why is it going to the floor? totally realize that my front fucking calipers are off aren't they so i've pushed the pistons out i've got this one back in so that one's all right but it's been a bit of a nightmare that one's back in but this other one is just not playing ball at all oh stupid it's fucking stupidly so let's try and get it flat basically i just need to push them back in obviously just bleed the brakes again but i'm trying to find something which is flat because you've got to push them in literally perfect oh it's not ideal guys it's a pushing piston it's not a winding but obviously when it's like this you've got to make sure it's perfectly flat and then push it push it back in which is easier said than done if i'm being honest the other side i just went through the stiffness and it did just pop back in it went in pretty straight. Oh, fuck's sake. To be fair, that does look pretty straight to me. Let's just keep going. To be fair, this feels better than last time. When I did it a minute ago, it felt fucking horrible. So I went and pushed it back out again with the pedal. <sighs> Probably going to get a load of fluid to come out now because the fluid pissed out into the seal. So when this goes in, it's going to squeeze all that fluid out. <laughs> fucking nightmare how stupid of me was that absolutely stupid that look all right to me right so with that absolute shit storm at the end i don't have time to do the rear suspension and stuff so i've genuinely got to go drop these off at chester and pick up the tires as well and they've both got it done before five and it's like half three now um so i genuinely don't have time we've done well i mean i'm a bit annoyed at myself for just wasting like an hour of my life on them on their brake calibers, but everything seems fine. So we're, so we're gonna go and drop the arms off at Wizard of Lock in Chester. We're gonna go there now and we're gonna pick up our tires on the way um, and come back. We need to go to the gym as well. So we've got just in next Friday. All this needs to be back on. I hope we don't have clearance issues uh, with the new arms. Um, I think Wizard of Lock, apparently he, he's like one of the OG guys. So I've sent this, I've got as many pictures as I can. Hopefully I won't have any like knocking or clearance issues or anything like that. But for now, I'm going to tidy up. I need to tidy everything away. Um, for now, I love you all and we'll see you in the next one.